five pound and I just remember thinking oh my god like it's a week before Christmas and I've took a fiver how can this be possible I was like I'm giving up it's rubbish it's two weeks before Christmas <laughs> Hello, I'm your host, Andrew Leong, and welcome to Hashtag Ambitious. For anyone who has never tuned in before, Hashtag Ambitious is all about business, marketing, and startups. I interview entrepreneurs and professionals about their businesses, their journey, their struggles, and how they're growing their businesses. In this episode, we have Chelsea Mills. Chelsea is a fashion entrepreneur who founded Miss Mills, which can be found in Topshop and online. Let's jump right in. Hi Chelsea, thank you so much for being on the Hashtag Ambitious podcast, really appreciate your time. So Chelsea, can you just let us know a little bit about yourself and your background and, and how you come about starting up Miss Mills? Yeah, so I'm Chelsea Mills, the owner of Miss Mills. A bit about my background story and where I started was about four years ago, um, I literally started from the boot of my car, wow. going around to... Um, salons. I first moved to Liverpool and obviously all the Liverpool girls are dead fashionable. They love the fashion, the trends and I was like this could be a good business for me. So I decided to get some clothes in, add stuff on, do some changes and my boyfriend's cousin said there's some really good salons, you'll love your stuff, I'll show you around Liverpool. So we literally like on a Friday night, Saturday day, drove around to salons, went in <laughs> and was like, hi Ed, does anyone want to look at any clothes? And they was like, yeah, come on in, come on in, what have you got? So I was like, wow, this is crazy. Like the actually Liverpool girls love the clothes. Literally everyone was buying. I was like, oh my God, I've realised that I'm just giving them the hangers, I need bags. <laughs> 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 so we'd, I'd sell out, I'd go and get more, add some stuff on. Mm. And literally every week we was doing that. And then I got to know her friends and was like going in on my own. One point we'd got some stuff into a salon and then we drove around and it was like a proper estate. And I was like, oh my God, loads of people just come out of the house. And I made like £600 and I was like, wow, this is the best estate I've ever been on. <laughs> and it was like, keep coming back. We're going on holiday next week. Um, we love your stuff. Then people were texting me, do you have any um, any little bits? My daughter's going on holiday. Can you call around? So I was like, yeah, what do you need? All size eight, little white skirts. So I was like, oh my God, this has actually become a thing. People are messaging me now. Literally a few months had passed by. There was days that, you know, Shirley couldn't come with me and I'd just go in on myself. She'd say, you know, go, you, go on your own, you'll be fine. So I'd go in the salon and I was like, oh yeah, would you like to look at any clothes? It's like, yeah. And then one of the owners um, in Highton said to me, why don't you leave your stuff? Because I'm that busy, people keep asking me for your stuff, leave the rail. So I said, I tell you what, I'll leave a rail of stuff, change it every two weeks and give you a fiver off each item, which they were dead happy yeah. with. From that one shot, I had about five salons across Liverpool with my railing <laughs> and they eventually got bags for the stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um and I just kept changing it around and they become like my good friends. Mm. Still to this day, I see these salon owners and they're like, uh, you know, like the way your hangers are displayed, the mm. sizes, the way your delivery comes in, the way you tag your stuff, you know, the way it looks and with, you know, like putting outfits together. It's all simple things that you wouldn't think of mm. without being with them that you learn. Well, they've got years and years of experience, haven't yeah. they? So, uh... And I've like, I was in three of the stores, Essex, Liverpool and Manchester, and that was crazy, like, to be in three big cities and the stock. And it's the managers in there as well have got so much passion for the jobs mm. that they really want you to succeed. They, you know, they're on you all the time. And even um, the VM manager, she was always saying to me, you know, like, the snake print is you know big at the minute you know if you could make like do the shirts and the pants and oh. the way that they, they drive the stores and they've got so much passion for the jobs really helps and it, it inspires you more and you're like well wow yeah if I get yeah. more of these and I'm going to sell you make more money and it's like a little family in there you got good. three stores then in Essex and Manchester and Liverpool yeah you can't be in all three at one time how are you managing that 
that were, they were staff, so it's 16 hours, you've got to have your staff in, in the store to drive your sales. Um, when I first started in Liverpool, I was like, I can do this myself. So last Christmas, I was doing it all myself. Uh, I was in Manchester and Liverpool. Mm. I was running back and forth like a little yo-yo from 1062, <laughs> doing all um, my stock, dealing with customers and... <laughs> We need another 60 courts. Yeah. I was like, wow, can't believe it. it. went so crazy. And again, it's just getting to that point where you can't do everything. I can't physically do a delivery in Manchester mm. and take my stock back to Liverpool. So then you've got to get staff on. But it's it's teaching people to drive your sales, mm. um, you know, because like their staff will help as well. But they're so busy because Topshop's so big yeah. that the focus is, is their own buy. Um, and that's why you need someone who's really good at driving is your brand so, seen as separate in top shop or is it kind of integrated like people wouldn't know i mean you do get the odd customer who'll walk along and she doesn't realize that it's you know it's miss mills yeah. she'll think it's top shop because some of them have top shop hangers on and in some stores they've got the white hangers on which is supposed to be on white hangers but in some stores the setup's a little bit different mm. it is seen as separate we're seen as concession uh, like uh, adidas and stuff are seen as concession in there but it's just if the lady mm. comes into shop who doesn't really get concession or whatever she yeah. might not realize it is unless it's obvious on a white anchor then uh, okay they'll see <laughs> oh, so interesting i love retail how okay so you i mean you started very it's just basically from your boot of your car yeah now you're online as well how is that different? Is it is it made it more complicated? Has it made it easier? It's it's hard. Um, when I first started, you get a lot of negative people saying, "Oh, you're never going to make it. Oh, you're never going to do it." And you start questioning yourself. The thing is to not listen to people, and you know, just if you want to do something, you do it. If you believe in it enough, you'll do it. You know, I think. I got knocked back. I, I thought, oh, top shop's great. And, you know, you get knocked mm. back three times and you're not ready and you get put back in your place. You think, right, well, okay, then I'll take another way. Mm. And, and you build up. There's a lot of people that say you can't do something. My website at the minute, I'm just waiting for my third website to be built, which is going to be a professional website. And it has took like four years to get to this point. Mm. And a lot of people do say you're up against Boohoo, misguided. That's good, but, you know, people buy into you as a small business yeah. and, you know, like sharing your stories and stuff. How are you driving sales to your, to your website? What's working for you the most? Uh, Facebook. Um, okay. Instagram. A lot of people say, you know, Instagram. My new website's going to have the Instagram shop, so mm. I think Instagram's a really big way that everybody's on it, sharing the pictures mm. and hashtags. Um, but I think it's... A lot of people see the stuff in store and then when they buy it and they like it. I am now getting people asking me for certain things for Christmas. Like yesterday I had four messages for tartan blazers. Well, I have these skirts in. So now people who've bought into the band already are asking me to make things for Christmas. So it's like you, you've got to get the customer and keep that customer and mm. keep your customer happy. I think that's a big part of, of the business as yeah, well. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. What's been your biggest challenge to date and how did you overcome it? My biggest challenge is, it's like the cash flow of the business. Okay. The stock, like this, this is not me being big-headed, but I am a really good buyer. And when I get even stuff that's being made, the things that I get out of, say, 100 designs, or a hundred pieces that I buy in, I get one wrong, mm. which is insane because it just, I know my customer base, for example, I know my Topshop customers, I know exactly what they like, what's fitted, what's, and now I've gone to the Albert Dock, I know it's more Italian, my customers love all our like oversized stuff and it's about knowing the customers in your target market and I think for me the biggest challenge was learning that learning mm. people because I've got a habit of well I did used to have a habit of buying things or getting stuff made that I love ah. and it wasn't for everybody and then I'd realized that like Liverpool because I've seen the girls all the time oh they'll love this they love this when I went to Essex 
the girls love the fashion down there, but they won't spend like a Liverpool girl. Mm. That it needed to be a cheaper price point. And for me, it was just learning that and getting it right for each store in each city. And that was quite challenging because I'd have one selling out, managers on me for changing an offer, and I was like, wow, this is like a whirlwind. I need to quickly adapt and overcome and, and get it right. How did you organise that then? Because that sounds very... Because it sounds like you almost got different market segments for different areas where you have... How are you... So are you buying stock for those specific stores then based on the customer trends there? Yeah, so it, it's... I, I I buy or we make stuff that's for that certain customer. So, for example, Trafford Centre at um, summertime festivals, it was absolutely flying out. All the little festivals, the young girls, the little belly tops, mm. um, little frilly shorts, frilly skirts, that wasn't going in Liverpool. Mm. Complete different. You know, the Liverpool girl wanted like maybe a frilly blouse or like the flare pants. It was, and I was thinking, oh, it's going to go in Liverpool, and I completely got it wrong. It just wasn't shifting in Liverpool. The stock was nice. It shifted in Manchester. Mm. It just wasn't Liverpool. So I quickly, within, like, a few weeks, I needed to... It's it's a really hard game because if you get it wrong and it's wrong where you've got, like, 100 pieces of, of one thing, you could fa- fastly end your, biz- your yeah. business. You know, it's got to be... Right, because the cust- everything's there within Topshop. The customers, um, you know, everything for them to buy. But if you make that one mistake and your stuff's collecting dust, yeah, you're gone. Wow. <laughs> and your business is finished. <laughs> <laughs> so you need to be on point with what you're getting and know the customer. Yeah. Um, and that's what you know. It's always keeping sharp. And is that are you using intuition for that, or are you kind of um, using data, or is it? You record how are you managing that? Because that just sounds like an absolute. To be honest, just me, my mind. Like I'm literally like we have like plans in the office, and obviously I use my Mac and stuff. But it's 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 so fast. Like to be honest, I don't even know how I sleep at night. Um, it's just keeping it sharp and on. Like already now, I'm on my spring summer. Hmm. I know exactly what what's going. Um, like the patterns and stuff. It's. It's just keeping on top of everything, and I can't explain how fast fashion changes. And now, t- today, it seems that people don't spend seven hundred pound on a pair of pants anymore or mm. an outfit. You know, they want it's cheap, fast fashion, mm. but they want quality at the same time. Mm. They don't want to put a pair of pants on, and you know, they bend down and they split. They want quality too. So that's you've got to get all three correct to keep that customer mm. coming back. So, what's your what's your vision for the future? Vision for the future is to grow with Topshop in the main stores mm. and it'd be nice to launch on in Oxford Circus, the number one flag, oh, wow. flagship store. And I've spoke to head office, I was in Vegas looking at the concession and I said to her, one day I will be here. <laughs> and she said, just keep working towards it. My goal would be to open in Vegas, take my brand to America. Wow. That is big. <laughs> that would be good. Um, but that's a long a long way off. Just keeping on top of my seasons, um, growing my brand, strong online, what a big online, and growing to one day launch my brand in America would have been my dream. So if you were to start, Miss Mills, from the beginning now, knowing everything that you know, would you have done anything differently? And if so, what would you do? Um, I like my journey that I went on and met a lot of good people. I think... If you have US dollars in your bank account, pay close attention because we could be days away from the big... If I was to start it again now, it's... In order to be honest, I don't think I would change anything because I think every day you're learning and every day you learn something new and I don't think you ever get to a point where you know everything it'd just be the one main thing is managing your time you know you've got to sleep at night you've got to eat well to Mm. concentrate um and i'd just maybe get the right people on at the right time to do things that you know like my admin or me online to look after that and then i'd never let anybody take over my buying or designing working with the design team ever because i think that's that's the main thing of 
where you get right. And I think when you start giving people that power, it's not you anymore and mm. it's not... It doesn't become your brand anymore. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. become... Um, so it's important to keep on those styles and stuff. Okay. So, I mean, that's, that's a great insight into your business and how you got started. But really interested in you as well and, yeah. and, and how you think. And <laughs> so we talked on before, like the law of attraction, and I'm a big believer um, you are what you think about most of the time. Yeah. So it sounds like you've got a lot going on in your mind. So what, 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 what is in your head... What do you think about the most? I, I think about the most my journey and where I'm going next, what's happening next. Like I'm already now thinking about what's happening after Christmas. Mm. You know, if you're a PT, that's great. Everybody wants to go to gym after Christmas. Mm. Um, you've just got to, I just stay focused of what, what's next. And my dad always says like plan A, B, C, D and E. And I'm like, oh God, you're joking. I'm only on plan B. <laughs> <laughs> and um, it's like, you know, you've got to write this plan down. You know, you've got to know each plan to each different like road of your of your life and it's just I'm always thinking ahead mm. always overthinking do you, do you ever turn off then do you do anything to kind of I switch off Thai boxing um I've done that since I was five but it's finding the time this is what I mean when you need to switch off like get into the gym for six o'clock and your trainer's texting you you know be here on time and you're walking in late it was just it hard to do it means sounds like I'm making excuses here because really you should just make time get up earlier um but I do I do love Thai boxing and I just feel like it's really good to get into and you know just takes my mind off everything I have now started reading of an eye okay which never was me before I, I'm literally on the first page if it's boring I switch off <laughs> <laughs> what are you reading um I'm reading Reading, she means business and all that. So I've just read the international bestseller, The Rules of Wealth, Richard Templer. I've got that on, yeah. That was really, really good. That's a really good book, yeah. Actually, I read it within two days, which really surprised oh, myself. Wow. <laughs> it was that interesting, I couldn't put it down. I was just, my lamp was on nearly all night. And the next one I'm reading is She Means Business. Is it Carrie Green? No, I'm not heard of that one. Um... It's basically a lady that started a business and telling you from the start where she went wrong and what she did and mm. motivation and stuff and visualising. Yeah. So that's interesting. There's a book you um, might like. It's called Girl Boss. It's by the woman. Called? She set up Nasty Girl. Yeah, read that. Yeah. Okay. Really good. Yeah, she's pretty. Because she, uh, what was she a security guard or something, wasn't she? Yeah. She was, well, I've been that Manchester Airport. <laughs> Have you? Yes, in the airport. Wow. wow. At the beginning of this business, and then yeah. I decided Aaron needs to be my own boss. So you were you you were working at the same time as you uh Yeah. Wow. So you tell, tell, tell me that. Tell me okay. about that. So I remember sitting with my accountant and I said, um, so I'm gonna buy an house. It's it's hard for the first I think it's two or three years accounts you've got to have. Mm. It's the start of the business. So I said, I'm going to, this is really funny. <laughs> I'm going to get a job at Manchester Airport and I'm going to work as well. And he was like, well, you know, Chelsea, you can only do so much. I was like, no, 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 it's fine. So I went and got a job, really random, a security officer at Manchester Airport. And I thought, I love this job. It's great. Dead good. Um, wasn't many I like 16 hours a week it was I'd get up and then the time started getting really silly five in the morning so I thought we'll be up at five finish at about 12 one then I can get on with my day mm -hmm. so the first few weeks really motivated myself could do it then I started feeling really tired mm -hmm. and thought this isn't safe driving um up and down the motorway so then I carried on going with the job. Then the pay started getting silly. They weren't paying you on time. You was doing a lot for your money. And I just thought, you know what? This isn't for me. I need to give 100% to the business. Mm -hmm. You can't do both. You know, I was literally burning myself out. Yeah. Um, so then, like I said to the accountant, you know what? I'm just going to go fully with the business and leave it. And he said, I didn't want to say, but yeah, you, yeah, it's either one or the other. Wow. So I was working at the same time. Security <laughs> officer Manchester. How did, how did you get <coughs> security officer? How did that come about? Do you know what? I don't know. Maybe because my dad like does security and stuff and like all these like the hidden cameras and yeah. you know I just found it interesting and even that again I like to set myself challenges. Mm. It was a three week intense training 
obviously because of the kind of stuff you're doing, it's airport security. And I thought, I'm never going to pass this exam. I'm mm. dyslexic, I can't do it. And my dad said, anything you put your mind to, you can do it. Stop telling yourself you can't or you won't. Mm. I was going home, I was like saying to Gary, you know, can you test me? And he was like, you know, you're getting yourself all stressed out. You just need to calm down and put your mind to it and you'll pass it. So I thought, I'm sick of asking you to, you're high on positivity and I'm not going <laughs> to pass this exam. So I started just doing it myself. Um Aku pengen makan ikan so, Nah di sini kita juga bisa mancing ya Buat ngumpul-ngumpulin ikan Buat nanti memasak ya Di sini kita juga I remember driving to my grandma Saying to my granddad Help me with this Because these two just keep saying Put your mind to it And you'll do it And they did a little test I went in And I failed mm. You get um, You get two chances So I remember sitting with um, the, the guy who trains you And he said Right Chelsea You just need to Calm down and just, you can do it if you put your mind to it. And I thought, oh, God, if I hear this one more time. <laughs> so I went on my dinner and I come up and I thought, if you do it, put your mind to it, you'll do it. Mm-hmm. I'm going to pass this exam. So it's um, one where you sit down and you go on the computer and you watch things coming through the x-ray. And I thought, this is hard. It's very hard to spot. I know it sounds simple, the picture's just coming on, but, you know, you're looking for certain things. Anyway, I passed it. So as I come out, he looked at me and he really was trying to torment me. And he's like, I'm really sorry, Chelsea, but you're now going to be working for Manchester Airport. And I just remember screaming in the corridor. And I was like, so pleased. So then from then I was like, if you put your mind to it, you can do it, Chelsea. <laughs> <laughs> so I was just, from that day, I just keep, when I'm driving, I go, put your mind to it, Chelsea, you can do it. Um, and then I passed it, but that was very hard. Yeah. I remember sitting with um, a girl who was a, a prison officer and she said the exams for that was hard and she was crying. She was like my mum's age, she was like 40. And I remember saying to her, oh, Paula, put your mind to it, you'll do it. And I thought, I hope she don't think I'm annoying. <laughs> um, but it was hard, but I did it, I passed the exam. Amazing, amazing. And then left three <laughs> months after. <laughs> I did um, extra work as well, but i seen that as like a networking Okay. Work Clever. because it's so boring that you sat there all day. I literally was networking and I've met a lot of people through that mm. who um have come to my fashion shows that I've done and that but again it took far too much of my time being sat there from seven in the morning yeah. till seven at night. Met some good contacts, but again, it's just you need a hundred percent Okay. So have you implemented anything in your life or adopted anything that's had a big impact in your life in the last couple of years so it could be a an app on your phone that's made you more productive or um meditation or something have you done anything that's kind of really positively impacted your life at all um maybe yoga okay yeah that's quite calming um yoga really relaxes me because I'm always uptight and stressed quite a lot of the times and you know we're doing so many things so yoga's quite relaxing mm. and pe- people do say meditate meditation helps and so many i think two minutes out your day to just sit and relax so yeah things okay. like that do help okay and do you ever lose focus or get frustrated uh, or get any self-doubt and if you do what do you do to kind of get back into focus yeah um I do, it's like some some days, like I, I wake up and I think, oh God, I'm never going to get there. This is taking forever. Or I'll have like a meeting and, you know, you've got to hit targets and you start thinking, God, this target's impossible. How am I supposed to do that? Cash flow this business myself, it's hard. Mm-hmm. I've had no private investors, I've had no rich parents. You know, it's all been through hard work. So some days you do lose it and then you've just, you know, people say like, I said before, like Gary and my dad are positive people, so they like look where you've come, you know, look look today. And I'm like, yeah, you've just got to. It's, it's hard. You've just got to sit and think sometimes and remember everything that you've been through. And the five pound before Christmas yeah. was a killer. But that, you know, the Christmas after it was like fifteen grand. Wow. So it's wow. a complete. You know, that's within twelve months. So sometimes I've just got to sit and think. You know, it's carry on so it sounds like you've got a really good support network with positive people around you but then you also take time to self-reflect and 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 revisualize where you want to be in the future yeah i've just i'm grateful every day for like people i've got around me and stuff and the help that i've had from 
the top, um, you know, like with head office in top shop, you know, they're very patient um, with my stuff and mm-hmm. know the way I run my business and like it. It's just sitting there and, you know, thinking of everything I've done. Awesome. Is there any questions I haven't asked you that I should have asked you? Um, no, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> if people want to reach out to you, can they and, and how can they? Yeah, they can, um, they can contact me and I'm always like, you know, happy to help people if anyone's got any questions that all my social media is linked to me um you know so they can always dm me on instagram that's direct message because some people don't know what dm (laughs) means (laughs) um yeah and i'm always happy for any questions for anyone who's thinking that they don't have money or because you hear a lot of people saying can't start business because i don't have money well i didn't have money i've not come from money Mm. um just to make that clear and I've had no private investment I did get offered six months ago a hundred grand of a private investor oh, wow. and I said no oh, wow. uh, because 